I talk a lot about bones and muscles and joints and biomechanics as a whole, but there is a highly underappreciated aspect of what helps us move forward in space and move through the gait cycle effectively with those biomechanics. And that is the ability for the visual field to help us sense where we are in space and move forward. In order to understand how that works, I want to break down the gait cycle to help us gain an understanding of how the body is moving through space. And then we'll tie in the visual things after that. As we take a step forward with a stance leg, we're going to be in external rotation of this side of the pelvis with the sacrum turning towards that side. And we're also going to have this arm and shoulder complex in extension, but external rotation as a whole. Now, as we move into mid stance, where the arm is in line with the body and the pelvis is going to be in internal rotation and the femur is going to follow that with more pronation of the foot, we're also going to have the scapula start to move into more internal rotation as the arm moves ahead of the body. And upon late stance with push off with the leg behind the body, the arm is going to be out in front to help push us to the other side. To visualize this on an actual human, as we take a step forward, we are in heel strike on this side and toe off on the other side, or late stance. This arm is behind the body and this arm is forward, but we need to create a delay or eccentric strategy to hold ourselves back on this side. Or else if we didn't delay or hold ourselves back, we would just keep going forward and this other leg could never swing with it. So what we need to do is we need to eccentrically or orient our muscles in the elongated position back here to begin to hold ourselves back and then the rib cage needs to help stay back with us. So as we transition onto mid stance, this rib cage needs to stay back to act like a parachute so that we can bring forward the other side. Now, as we enter late stance and this hip extends behind us, this arm also needs to come through. So this is going to allow us to push our body weight over to the other side. Now, in order for this to happen, we need to be able to first load ourselves, hold ourselves back, and then load and still stay a little bit back, and then create propulsion to the other side. So we need this arm swing to work with hip extension to get us over to the other stance leg so we can alternate from side to side. A lot of people think gait is this movement where we are using muscular driven strategies to push ourselves from side to side. But really it's this conservation of momentum that occurs via catching ourselves and falling. And that allows us to not burn a lot of energy or calories in order to move ourselves forward in locomotion. Because if we did spend a lot of energy, that would be inefficient. And since we are concerned with survival, or we were way back in the day in conserving energy, we needed to create a strategy to help us use momentum, which ultimately allows us to move very efficiently at the least amount of caloric or energy expenditure. So this is essentially what we're trying to accomplish here. So as we move through the gait cycle, it's this alternation between potential and kinetic or moving energy. The information in this video I learned from a course from Postural Restoration Institute called Forward Locomotor Movement. And I highly recommend it. It was a great course and it really opened my eyes to how important it is for the visual system to work alongside all of these biomechanical things we talk about as it relates to movement. We see people all the time take these short choppy steps where they're not getting a lot of rotation and they look like a refrigerator moving through space. These people have a limitation in arm swing, potentially for several different reasons, but also pelvic rotation, and they're not going to be getting that full hip extension. And a lot of the times that can cause issues over time if they're limited in the ability to get adequate arm swing. So the point is, is that in order for us to feel grounded on one side, we need to be able to feel and sense the periphery around us. In order for us to extend our hip behind us and push off from one leg and accept that weight on the other. So really you can make the argument that arm swing forward on that side is going to set us up for success and allow us to achieve full hip extension. And that will also allow us to then have adequate ground heel contact on the other side. So now to apply it to the actual gait cycle itself, when I am striking around my heel and my arm is behind me, the other arm is out in front, I transition to this peak state of internal rotation 
where I have force into the ground, but then I have this controlled fall where this arm comes forward to help my momentum go to the other side. So there are all these different reasons why this arm swing is so important. With all this information in mind, you can make the argument that swinging your arms more when you walk for some people is one of the best things they can do to improve how they feel when they walk and their efficiency. But sometimes it's not that simple. Sometimes people have restrictions in their ability to actually swing their arms. Because in order for us to be able to swing our arms, we have to be able to move our rib cage in a certain orientation that allows us to do that. So essentially, if you don't have the ability to move your rib cage in the orientation you need to, then that's not going to allow your shoulder blade to move in the orientation it needs to, and that's going to limit your arm swing. So some people need the ability to first get this rib cage positioning and the ability to expand and compress and move through that in an alternating way for their arm swing to be efficient. If you're looking for ways you can do that, I will attach some videos in the article I'm writing alongside this video, which will be linked in the description down below. Now within the course, PRI got into the idea of how due to the natural asymmetries of the body, the left peripheral field tends to be a little bit more limited along with that left forward arm swing. And if you want more information on those patterns, you can look at my left AIC content or look into PRI's information, which goes extensively into that. So these exercises are going to be primarily left-sided in nature, but that doesn't mean the right side still doesn't need attention. A good basic beginning drill would be the following drill I'm about to show where it's stationary in nature, and we're getting that rotation back that a lot of people are missing. And we're getting that nice forward arm swing and keeping our head neutral and looking ahead, which will allow us to still get that centered focus forward as we should have when we walk, but the peripheral vision is going to pick up on that palm. This is the left stance in the right AFIR position from the right AIC pattern technique from Postural Restoration Institute. To set up for this, we need to have this staggered stance position right here where we have our right heel in line with our left toes. And what we're gonna do from here is keep 80% of our weight in our back left leg and 20% of our body weight on this right foot right here. On the left side, we're gonna have that 80% spread between the heel and also the ball of the big toe and little toe right here. Same thing on the right side, but again, it's only 20% of our body weight. Now, what we're gonna do to set up for this is first put your hands on your hips and get a little slight tuck so that your pelvis is parallel with the ground. And now, Trevor, what I'll have you do is reach your left arm straight ahead and your right slightly back. But we want to make sure that we keep our pelvis, our zipper turned to the left to start here. So this is a good starting position. Now, Trevor, what I want you to do is reach that left arm more, which is going to start to orient his pelvis to the right, but he needs to keep that 80% of his weight on his left side. Keeping the eyes up, staying relaxed. He should feel a lot of oblique on the right side and potentially a little bit on the left. And he should also feel very heavy on that left side. Again, 80% of his weight is back there. And all he's gonna do is maintain this position, breathe in through his nose, out through his mouth. The most common mistake on this activity is people are going to want to start in a position where their pelvis is turned right, but we need to start with that pelvis and zipper intentionally turning left. And the reason why we are going to sense that zipper start to orient a little bit to the right is because of this left arm reach right here. So remember to go through the steps just like that. If you want something more dynamic, this next exercise is really great for that, which is holding us in stance on that side. And we're going through dynamic arm swing which is a great drill for retraining exactly what we're talking about in this video. This is the alternating reciprocal step through with foot elevation from Postural Restoration Institute. The purpose of this is to train us to stay in our hip as we transition through the mid stance phase of gait and add some arm swing in there with it. So to set up for this, we have an elevation here of about three to four inches. I wouldn't go any higher than that. And a nice 
box like this that's firm is going to be great for it. We're going to get one foot on this box right here, the other leg is off, and we are going to feel the heel, specifically the inner heel on this left side, and also the ball of the big toe and the little toe, but focusing more so on the ball of the big toe right here, not the actual toe itself, but where the ball of the foot is. And he's going to have about 50-50 split between the back and front part of his foot. Now, Trevor, what I'll have you do is hip shift into that left side. So what that looks like is I want you to bring that right hip forward and then get that left hip slightly back, maintaining those foot pressure points. So now his right hip is slightly more ahead than his left. And I also want him to do a very slight hip tuck. So if his pelvis was a bowl of water, it's not spilling out the back excessively or the front excessively, it's nice and neutral. So if you do those two things right, where you bring that right hip forward and also tuck a little bit, you should feel that inner groin muscle on that left side, right up in here. Now what I want you to do is get really heavy on this left side where almost all your weight is on that left foot. But again, 50% here, 50% here. And now he should feel a little bit of his outside left hip working with that left inner thigh. That's exactly what we want. Also, hopefully he's getting a little bit of side abs or oblique on that side as well, but he'll feel that more as he goes through this exercise. So keeping your eyes up, staying heavy on the left, I want you to bring your right foot forward so it's lightly touching the ground with the heel and bring your left arm forward and right arm back. Good. And now just gently go back and forth going back toe, and then to front heel. All the while, he's keeping his weight in this left side, keeping his eyes up, staying relaxed, and going as slow as he can. The goal is, how slow can he go while keeping his eyes up and feeling that outside left hip, inner thigh, and also oblique on that side. If he can keep all three of those things going and maintain this through the duration of the activity, then that means he's doing something well and I would make sure that he keeps those. And the second he would lose either one of those three muscles, whether that's the oblique, the inner thigh, or the outside hip, stop, shake it out, and then set back up and finish out your set. There's a couple of things that can happen in terms of compensations within this exercise. The first one is that people are going to start to arch their low back as they get tired, and then that's for sure going to make them lose that side ab and probably some of that outside hip and inner thigh as well. The other thing that we see is people will start to feel unstable, and then what ends up happening is that they start to look down, or their arm swing stops being as significant. So we'll take these little short arm swings, but we want to make sure it's nice and controlled. If you feel like you're losing your balance, or you're losing any of those three muscles I mentioned earlier, take a rest, shake it out, and then finish out the rest of the set. A really basic and simple thing you can do on top of this is just to simply walk down a sidewalk, walk down a hallway, Keep your eyes straight ahead, but notice things that are in your peripheral vision. You don't have to consciously look that direction because that would defeat the purpose, but if you can notice things, you can begin to create that awareness along with better arm swing. So if you can sense things in your periphery, that will help you be able to start to pattern this a little bit better, improve your peripheral awareness, which is ultimately so important for getting adequate biomechanics within movement. Many people feel really silly when they start to swing their arms more, but I promise you it's not gonna look that weird. Many people feel like because they're so used to not swinging their arms that they look like a maniac walking down the sidewalk, but really you look like a normal person. I'd encourage you to just film yourself if you feel like you're swinging your arms too much, and I bet you that you're not. It feels more efficient, it is more efficient, and it's ultimately so much better for integrating our visual field and the implications for that and how that works with the actual biomechanics themselves.